Hi there, and welcome to Sean Cameron Photographic. Thank you so much for joining me. And what am I going to talk about today? Well, I gave decided to go and buy myself two cameras, and I gave myself a budget of £400 per camera. And what did I buy? Well, the giveaway's here, isn't it? Um, I bought myself a D3, a 12 megapixel D3 from back in 2007. It was Nikon's first full frame camera. And I also bought myself a D5600. Now that's from 2016. It comes with a kit lens. Uh, the kit lens is 18 to 55. It's a decent little camera. It's obviously not a pro camera like the D3. It's got 24 megapixels and it's DX. So let's see how we got on. So how am I gonna test it? Well, the first thing I thought about was if you've got a student about to go to college or you've got a kid that wants to learn how to do photography, and you've got 400 pounds burning a hole in your pocket, which way are you gonna go? And as you'll see by the tests, it's much, much closer than you'd think, despite the fact one's 2016 and one's 2007. Now, I thought, where are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go to test them? Well, I've got a favorite place, it's, red kites on top of a hill. I thought it'd be a really good way to test both cameras at moving objects, test them against the light, you know, against the bright sky. Dark object against bright sky should be an interesting test for them. I'm also gonna do an ISO test. Now, don't groan, I know some of you deplore the, pix the pixel peeping, but you never know when you're gonna use these two cameras in a dark se setup and you're gonna rely on those high ISOs. And it's a good idea to know how your camera deals with high ISOs. And finally, I've got a test for my good friend and colleague, Jamie. You've seen them before on other videos. Um, I've set up a side-by-side -side comparison of the photographs I've taken with both cameras, and he'll be trying to tell which is which. How he gets on, you'll have to stay and try and find out. But let's get on with the test. And that test is red kites. See you in a bit. So here I am on top of the hill and I've got the two cameras with me. I've got the D3 with the 300mm uh, lens, and I've got the 5600 with a 200 lens. Halfway through, I'm going to swap them over, and they're going to be on a shutter speed of about 5 to 800, and probably an ISO of roughly the same. Okay, let's see what we've got. Well, as you can see, it's absolutely freezing out there. Now I confess this was taken over two days. Obviously we've compressed it down for this video. I wish the red kites would come this quickly. I'm using the D3 here with the 300 2.8 lens. I'm using exposure compensation of at least plus one to allow for the bright sky, even though it wasn't very bright. The D3 is snapping to focus really, really quickly. But the one thing I have noticed is that it reaches its buffer. If you listen here, I've maxed out the buffer really, really quickly. Now onto the D5600 with the 70 to 200 2.8 lens on it. Now I discovered before using this camera that in shadowy conditions, the focus sometimes struggled. And certainly I found that on this occasion as well. But when the lighting was good, the focus was perfectly acceptable. Okay, now we've swapped the lenses. Now I have the 300 lens on the 5600 and the D3 has now got the 70 to 200. Okay, so let's see what they can do. 
Now using the D5600 with the 300 mil lens actually really exacerbated that problem of the focus. It really struggled as the conditions darkened and it just made it worse and worse. That said, we still managed to get some pictures. I didn't really notice the difference between the D5600's five frames per second compared to the D3's frames per second. But the one thing I did notice was that there was no focus lock switch and the focus point kept moving every time my chin hit it. It was really, really quite irritating. Obviously on the D3 there is one. I'm told that you don't get one until you reach the 7 series, the 7000s. Now back to the D3, and with the 7200 lens, it really just did not miss a beat. So here we come to the ISO test part of this comparison. Some people find this sort of thing as exciting as going to the dentist and a lot less pleasurable. So I'll try not to linger and leave the results largely up to you. Both cameras were set to a shutter speed of 250 and placed on a tripod. The photos were taken using constant studio lights. There's been no sharpening, but as they were taken as raw images, I've saved them as JPEGs. So let's get going. I don't want to hold you up any longer. And for those science fiction buffs amongst you, I've added some sound effects. So this is obviously ISO 200, and we can see pretty much it's as clean as it flipping well should be, to be quite honest with you. Any camera should be relatively clean and noiseless at 200. So it looks sharp. It's captured the lettering quite relatively nicely, but don't forget that I'm focused in on the front cap, the body cap. So next have a look at the 400 ISO, 400 D3 first. And yet again, I can't see anything wrong with that, but again, it's 400. We shouldn't be seeing anything at 400. 400 is a very low ISO nowadays. It was even for the D3. The D3 actually uh, was the first full frame camera that uh, Nikon did, digital full frame camera. Um, so it should be handling the, the noise even better than the 5600. But both of them seem to be dealing with it pretty well to me. Okay, 800. Let's have a quick look at 800. If anything, I would say it looks better. The D3 looks better at 800. And there's nothing wrong with the background there. The 5600. It's slightly brighter, but that's simply the way it's taken. Of course, it's a DX sensor, so it'll deal with it slightly differently. In fairness, it should be noisier, but of course it won't be noisier because it's a newer camera. One's 2007. And one's 2016. There should be, in theory, a huge difference between them. Okay, it's starting to take effect now with the D3, I would say, at ISO 1250. The 5600 still looks okay. It's a little bit sharper. So let's see at 1600. Okay, well I don't know about you, but look at the front cap. Look at the OM on the front cap. That looks pretty good to me. There's very little noise in the dark. And as I say, the 5600, simply the way they de it deals with it, it's exposing slightly more than the D3. It's simply the way the sensor's set up, the, soft the, the software's set up. Um, all I'm doing is controlling the shutter speed and the constant lighting. Okay, we are getting noise there, aren't we? I can start seeing a little bit of, a little bit more noise there. Let's see how the 56 deals with it. I mean, it's still clean. It's, to be quite honest, both cameras are still relatively clean. I mean, we really are pixel peeping, as the phrase has it here, and we'll blink an egg. They're doing, they're doing flipping well. You can't see very well, but the backgrounds were starting to show more noise than 
the cameras themselves. Look at the OM again. That's what I'm focusing on. The OM looks sharp as anything. And that's 3200. Look at the 5600. And that's starting to suffer, I would say. It could be my eyesight, but it's starting to suffer a little bit more. Let's have another look at the D3. I tell you what, the D3's... That's not bad at all, is it? As I say, you're the guys that need to come to the conclusions. I'm just showing you the information. That's at 5,000. Yeah, we're losing, we're losing quality there, aren't we? The 5,600 is starting to lag behind, I would say. So let's see, is that the DX sensor? Wow, interesting. Let's see what happens when we go to 5,000. No, 6,400, 6, 6,400 ISO. Yes, we can start seeing a little bit there. I know I keep saying that, and then I keep changing my mind, but remember, it's up to you guys to see. The OM is starting to become a little bit faint there. Maybe I should have zoomed in a little bit more. Let me know, guys. Tell me what you think. I'm trying to make this pixel peeping part much more exciting. Okay, well, I would say that's the end of the ISO test. Let me know what you think. I've done it as quickly as possible. We haven't lingered, and I've sped through it. If you want me to linger more longer next time, linger longer, let me know. Okay, thank you so much for reaching this part of the video. Um, I don't need to remind you, but we're comparing the D5600 to the D3. And we've reached the part where my good friend Jamie, hi Jamie. Hello Sean. Is going to see some pictures that he hasn't seen before other than the ones that are showing at the moment. <laughs> he doesn't know which ones are which. He's going to talk a little bit about the pictures. I may have an input as well, but I'm not going to give the game away because he needs to choose which one is the D5600 and which one's the D3. So, I've got my pen, I've got my paper, and we're going to start with, which one do you think that is, mate? Right, okay. I may have to take my glasses off so I can have a nice look at these on the monitor. What's your gut feeling? Um, I would probably simply go with the 5600 on the right and the D3 on the left because the colours are a bit more punchy on the one on the right um, so the 5600 on the right did you say yeah because prosumer as opposed to pro cameras tend to push out fishes that are a little more punchy because Fair point. people are so yes kind of expecting that yes what about the quality of the pictures themselves both these cameras were only 400 pounds second hand they cost the same amount and we're really comparing what you can get for 400 squidlings. There's not a lot to pick between them. I'm seeing lots of nice details in the feathers. I'm picking up water drops on the one on the right. Yeah, both of them look pictures I would be perfectly happy to get. Cool. Okay, let's see what we've got. And we got it completely the wrong <laughs> way around. <laughs> so. Eh, eh, do not pass go. Do not collect 200 pounds. So that's, a, that's a, a, a big zero, first of all. Right. <laughs> so I think the D3 have done remarkably well there. Um, it's had very little done to it. Um, it's pretty much taken from the raw file and with standard adjustments, a little bit of cropping and things like that that I would normally put into it. Um, I've basically turned it into a JPEG. Okay, Jamie, next one. More ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I like me ducks. Yeah, I mean, what I'm seeing is what you'll see on the screen, but I'm seeing the one on the left is slightly more exposed, a bit more color in it, but the one on the right, very nice, clear image, slightly toned down. Again, I actually think I'm seeing slightly more detail in the feathers on the one on the right as opposed to the one on the left. That's a good call because it's very difficult because obviously it was a cloudier shot that, it was a darker shot. Yeah. More shadowy. Yeah. 
it's not a particularly fair um, um, comparison. I, I will go the other way around this time. I will say D3 on the right and 5600 on the left. Okay, well, let's see what we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> I can see why you're a professional, mate. <laughs> yes. I can pick those professional cameras out like that, obviously. <laughs> so that's a zero out, out of two at the moment. <laughs> right. But I think what you said was still valid. Yep. Um, I really do. I think, um, um, despite the fact I was saying that uh, during the shadows, when it was shadowy, the, the, the D6, D5600 was struggling to find focus sometimes compared to the D3. When it did find focus, it was it was remarkably sharp. Yep. Right, next. Change of plan. More okay. birds, different breed. Jamie is actually looking at ones about this size. So that's why he's peering towards it at the moment. That's what I leaned out. If I'd thought it? about it, I'd have allowed him to see a slightly bigger picture. <laughs> It's going to be a tricky one. There's really not, in terms of exposure or you know, that, that type of thing, there's not a lot in between these two. I areas. took the photographs and I couldn't tell you which one's which at the moment. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of nice detail in there. I would say it's very hard, but there's probably slightly more detail on the one on the um, left. But in terms of which camera they took... To I thought the right hand one was a little bit noisy. Yeah, just, 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 just a tad more noise in it. So on that basis, I'm going to go with D3 on the right and 5600 on the left on the basis that older cameras tend to be slightly noisier than newer cameras. Is he right? Moment of truth. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so bad. But it just goes to prove how close they both are. Don't forget the D3 is a 2007 camera. Yep. And the 5600 you can buy new today. So not bad. Not rah, 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 rah to the D3. Yep. Okay, next one. Seeing lots of nice detail in the pictures, slightly brighter exposure on the one on the left, which is producing a slightly nicer picture. Lots of nice fit, fit, focus. All of these pictures were taken with the same lens, yeah. may I add, and these two pictures were taken with the same f-stop, the same aperture, so neither one had an advantage. And the same shutter speed is a matter of interest. Yeah. In terms of between it being a camera now and a camera from, was it, how many? 2007. 14 years ago. Amazing, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely there's... incredible. I, I'd be quite happy with both those pictures. I'd probably say I slightly prefer the one on the left, but that's just to do with a little bit of richness of the colour. If I was going by the previous criteria, I'd probably say 56 on the left and D3 on the right, on that basis that prosumers tend to put a little bit more colour in. And we can now find out how wrong I've been. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. I've got one right! Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> but there is so little to pick between these cameras. Isn't it close? Yep. Isn't it close? Yep. Next. Mushrooms. The oh. reason I took these guys is because I didn't want to just take sports photography. I didn't just want to take moving objects. I wanted to take ones that were... The type of ones that the, the, the average photographer may see, they might see a flower, they might see a plant, they may see each other and they yep. want to take photographs. And, and this is the reason why I took these still shots. I am seeing lots of nice detail and colour in both of the, these pictures. I'm seeing little striations on top of the mushrooms. I'm seeing lots of nice detail in the background around them. Um, slightly lighter exposure on the one on the right, slightly darker on the left, but to be honest, either of those I would consider valid exposures. I wouldn't have a problem with either of them. I think the aperture is slightly different on one of them, in fairness, which is why you've got that slight Difference. bouquet on the left-hand side. It's a slight blurring on the left-hand side. Yeah. I am going to say 
56 on the left and B3 on the right. You know you can't win at the moment, so because it's only out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a doom so and gloom badly. on the whole thing. Well, <laughs> true to form, <laughs> it's the other way around. Oh. But in fairness to Jamie, they're, they're quite small pictures that he's looking at. You guys are looking at much bigger ones. Oh. And the cameras are so close. Yep. They're remarkably close in quality. I, I, I would say that's what's coming out of this. It's, it's actually that most of the time, I'm essentially guessing. You can't, there's no one thing that says this picture is better than that picture. No. All of those have been perfectly acceptable pictures. I, I think you're absolutely right. And you've got a 2007, and I keep emphasizing this, a 2007 Pro camera compared to a modern novice camera. Yep. Um, both 400 pounds in the shop. And to be quite honest with you, there's no difference. So this leads to my conclusion, Jamie. Mm -hmm. My conclusion is, if your son and the daughter wants to take up photography seriously, maybe they're going to university, the D3. The D3 will teach them everything they know, they need to know. Yep. If your son or daughter is just starting photography, then the D5600 is a lovely little camera. And I'll, tell, I'll sh just show you, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, but on the back here, so he's nearly dropping it, it's so tiny. On the back there shows the aperture actually working as you change the f-stop. It gives you the shutter speed that you're on and it gives you the ISO, and that's a fantastic diagrammatic yep. image to show them what's actually happening. I think that's fantastic for a novice camera. I'm waving it around that the, the screen's gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> but for a novice, fantastic little camera. And equally, didn't it do well against a pro, an old pro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like yeah. us, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my conclusion. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe down below, as I always say. And don't forget to like it. If you keep liking them, I will produce more. If not, I go away and sulk. <laughs> <laughs> not really. See you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Jamie. And thank you very much. for <laughs> Take care. Bye. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I have to say it was really, really good fun doing it. But just after filming the last part with Jamie, uh, I had a visit from my neighbour and his 14-year-old son, and I thought, well, to be quite honest with you, it was far too good an opportunity to miss. So basically, I let him loose with both of my cameras to see what he thought of them. He's an enthusiastic lad, and he loves photography, so what better opportunity could I have? Well, he used both of them, he photographed my dogs, and so what did he say? Well... The D3 was great to use, but the 5600 was easier for him, lighter and better to understand. So, I underline, that underlines my conclusion, I think, and I feel quite happy about that, because if you've got a student that is going to university, the D3 is the camera. And if you've got a young, budding photographer, the 5600, or it's kind, 5100, 5200, it's a good camera. It's a great start camera. Okay, see you soon. And don't forget to like this if you, if you liked it. And don't forget, if you wanna see more of this, do the old subscription thing down below. See you soon, take care.